I am delighted to be here, and I must say that um, honored by your very kind invitation, I recognize you, um, Dr. Ogutu and Dr. Mongai. Throwback 2008, when I was here, and it is true, there wasn't this wonderful infrastructure. Most of it didn't exist. And I remember being in boardrooms at 6.15 in the morning, planning fundraising so that we could, we could make this happen. Cold mornings, hot mornings, and the nine yards. But look, it can be done. It can be done. And I know um, there were many happy experiences with people. I was sitting there, as you were mentioning, big numbers. And I remember it was such a big number for us in, in those early years. Um, Catherine Igave, I think she was chairing us. Um, but look at what has happened and how many Kenyans today stand to benefit from everything that um, has gone on. And um, as I was listening to you, I realized that um, this whole conversation of personal branding, which I want to race through so that I can keep friendships warm, um, is really where it all begins in the journey of transformation. So I want to recognize all the esteemed faculty in the room that I may not know of um, beyond this table. I want to recognize my fellow Strathmore University alumni, um, distinguished guests, and a couple of uh, bodyguards that I came along with. I'm honestly really honored to stand before you here today. Um, as an alumnus of this esteemed um, institution, and I'm really humbled that of all the alumni that you could have invited, um, you settled on me, and I want to say that I have been back several times. I have enjoyed this podium several times. I have enjoyed time in class, especially with the women's um, leadership program, so I am delighted yet again to be here tonight. This room is filled with individuals who share a common bond and a deep connection to those values. And I thank you for reminding us what some of them are. Um, we share those values. We have shared a good education here and transformative experiences that our community and our university offers. So our gathering here tonight is not only a celebration of our shared past, but most certainly a platform to envision our collective future. And, you know, you really did an amazing thing in curtain raising around that whole thing, because I want to discuss it um, more deeply. And so the topic that I've been entrusted to speak about resonates deeply with me, and this is to do with developing a personal brand. And now I see why they built this in. It's because transformation begins and ends around personal brand. And the concept of personal branding may seem new, but in essence, it's about understanding our uniqueness and the value that we all bring to the world. It's a reflection of our core principles, passions, and the impact that we wish to live on society. Now, let's reflect a little bit on what personal brand means to us. I've been in industry, they're being very polite in saying over 20 years. The last time I checked, I know that maybe my social media suggested I recently turned 29, but the truth of the matter is that I've been in industry a lot longer than the 20 years, and um, lots infused in that time around this subject. How many of us in this room recognize the name Steve Jobs? What do you remember him for? What do you know the name for? Sorry? Apple, mm -hmm. half bitten apple. <laughs> How many of you know Michael Jordan? Know of? 
everybody, no, 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 maybe there's Gen Z's that have come with my bodyguards. <laughs> Don't take it for granted. What is he known for? Basketball. Basketball. Hmm. I thought you'd say Jordan shoes, but you know, it's just me here. How many of you recognize Rihanna? Yeah? Okay, I needed to tenderize this a little bit. <laughs> Tiger Woods? Tiger Woods? Tiger Woods? Yes. Okay, all right. We're doing really good. Barack Obama? Yes. Is it a chorus? Where are the Kenyans in the room? <laughs> Beyonce? Did I hear some baritones come a little loudly from this side? Nelson Mandela? Yes. Okay, we're doing good. Have you ever heard of Eliud Kipchoge? Yes. Ah. What is he known for? What is he known for? Okay. I like that. I thought you'd talk about um, his Isuzu pickup. One, one fine line. Okay. Professor Wangari Madai? Okay. How's your heart feeling when I say that name? Yeah? Okay. Let's keep going. Do you know who Jeff Koinange is? Yes. Okay, chorus. Mm -hmm. Ferdinand Omanyala? Yes. Did I hear a pitch go higher? Yes. Nice. Angela Okitoi? Yes. Do you recognize? Yes. Nice. Nikita Kering? Yes. Fali Ipupa? Yes. It's Friday. Fali Ipupa? Yes. Jacob Zuma? Jacob Zuma? Yes. You recognize him? Yes. Okay. Paul Kagame? Yes. Okay. How long do you think it has taken for you to chorus back at me when I have called these names? What has he taken? What has it taken to chorus back? Sorry? Taken years? Have it, has it taken years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes, it has taken years to build personal brand within their spheres of influence, right? And a personal brand can be associated with what you do and how you do it and how you say what you say, what you own, how you impact other people. My grandmother, who, for those who know me well, I have always talked about. I was raised by my grandparents. I grew up in my elementary years. I was born in Nairobi, grew up in um, Mombasa. I went to school there, primary school. And then I came back to high school. Um, but I grew up on the lap of my grandfather and grandmother. So very, very strongly influenced by my grandparents. They raised me. And my grandmother, who rested at the tender age of 108. Um, yes, I do have a good gene. <laughs> always said to me, and I need to say it in Japanese, and then I will try loosely to translate. She said, Adoneido. Okay? Adoneido. So what this means is that business is relational. People are the business. People are wealth. Got it? So far so good? So Adoneido, meaning relations count, nurture them care for them, insulate your relationships. And at Strathmore, 
Our mission, which centers on providing an all-round quality education, ethical and social development and service to society, sets a strong foundation for us to cultivate our personal brands. We actually have everything deposited within us when we visit this institution that propels the possibility that we will build strong personal brands. This mission speaks to the very heart of what it means to be a Strathmore graduate and a Strathmore alumni. A commitment to academic excellence. We didn't exchange phone calls to use words that are showing up repeatedly this evening. But yes, a commitment to academic excellence, ethical values, and making a positive difference in the world. So as I stand here today, I'm reminded of my time here, which without a doubt was transformative. The education I received here was not only confined to books and lectures, but also the nurturing of character, critical thinking, and the entrepreneurial spirit. Dr. Mongai was who received us at our very, very first class. And as I was preparing to speak tonight, I'll never forget him walking into class at the graduate school and warning us that this is not a regular educational center. And he told us, I think we were about the third or fourth cohort, he said to us that from this experience, people come here and a couple of things happen. Their lives get so challenged that they discard things that they had held long on to. They sell their businesses, they shift their careers, they pivot into other things. So be warned, by the end of the year, you will probably be somebody other than who you are. And then he showed us the map of the world, and it was a dark, dark world. And um, there were lights in Europe and in America, and spots in Asia, but everything was very dark on our continent. And then he asked us, what will it take to turn on the lights in Africa? What will it take to turn on the lights in Africa? That conversation has never left me. And in fact, by my second semester, I was so disrupted in my thinking that I knew that he must have been a prophet. <laughs> and he was seeing into the debate that I had. And I got to a place and a point in my personal life where I called out the things that I really wanted to purpose. BSD group, which Dr. Mongai knows, was created on a napkin that then Serena Hotel used to cater here because our catering services had not yet been set up. And I began to ask one question. What will it take for those lights to go on if I don't champion the possibility of what has illuminated Europe and illuminated Africa. So it's getting philosophical. In that moment of transformation, second semester, I had four to go, it occurred to me that the thing that makes us conjure positive emotion towards brand America was really what? When you think about America, what comes to your mind? So if I say, I'm traveling to the US tonight. You're sitting here, I've got to finish quickly because I've got to go and I'm going to America. What are the things that come to your mind? What is your definition or what is the imagery in your mind about America? West. Tell me, West. Apple, yeah. what else? West. Okay, that's commodity. I'm a brand innovator. Opportunity. I s opportunity, that's commodity. Talk to me about what is opportunity. Touch it. 
feel it. Tell me, what do you what is America to you? You talked about Steve Jobs. What is Steve Jobs? What does he represent? Yeah, so innovation, still commodity. Talk to me and tell me Apple is innovation. Okay? What else is America in terms of imagery? When I say New York, what comes up? Broadway. Talk to me now. Broadway, what else? Yes, yeah, Statue of Liberty. What else is America? What happened to KFC? KFC came to Nairobi, so that's not America anymore. <laughs> yeah? What, what, what is America? Land of possibility. Land of possibility, but touch the possibility with me. I'm trying to make a point here. Reward for effort. Okay. But, but what is a product that you would... I'm, I'm commodity now. I'm prompting. What is America in terms of product? What is America in terms of service? Speak to me about some brands that you know. Nike. Nike. Nice. Now we're making progress. Nike. Ford. Ford. Very good. Amazon. Amazon. What else? Coca-Cola. Coca Where were you the whole evening? Coca-Cola. <laughs> Pepsi, to be fair. Microsoft. Can we go on and on and on and on? Isn't that what creates America? Walt Disney? Is that America? Let's move to Europe. Okay, we can start with Eiffel Tower. What else is going on? London Bridge, what else is going on? Can we move into Mercedes? Excellent. What else? I'm making a point here. Ikea. Ikea. Then we move into Asia. And work with me, and I'm staying with his map. There was a time it was called Lucky Gold Star. Are you with me? Today, what is it called? It's called LG. Okay? And the question became, why isn't Africa showing up? Then, which was 2008, I couldn't count with confidence 10 brands on my palms that were coming out of Africa. And my, my eureka moment happened whilst I was in this school on a napkin and built and thought and dreamt. 14, 15 years later, BSD Group continues to disrupt and just three years ago published for the first time ever on the continent the top 100 most loved brands by women in Kenya study, which has become a must have in boardrooms to access the data that you need to capitalize on a demographic that has remained ignored, omitted. So this is what we're talking about when we say you can ride on transformative values to begin to impact on society. So I believe that the knowledge is a catalyst for change and that each of us has a role to play in shaping a better society. In today's world, developing a personal brand is vital to ensure that you stand out and you make an impact. A personal brand is not just a logo or a tagline, and I think you did well to remind us that. It's the combination of skills, values, experiences, and unique qualities that define who you are and how you present yourself to the world. Some of the people I referred to earlier in, in my remarks as I was prompting whether we knew them have had great successes, um, but some have also had challenges in managing their personal brands, and we won't even get into that right now. But it's very possible to injure, disrupt negatively your personal brands by acts of commission or omission, and you were saying, you know, when we read the newspapers, you're probably sitting there nervous. Will this thing that is alleged 
be out of any of our alumni. The world will judge us very harshly. So it's with utmost care that we speak now, and we must continue to speak carefully, commenting about issues as well as being sensitive to cultural, social, and political nuances when engaging with various audiences, especially in this very dynamic world of digital communication. So a personal brand has equity, which can be converted into commercial value, and a trust component, which is key in our relations with others, okay? Did you know that people only do business with people they know, people they like, and people they trust? Just think about it. I will only do business with you if I know you. I will only do business with you if I like you. And I will only do business with you if I trust you. It's a global principle, okay? So building a personal brand is also about authenticity. And you took the word from me, sir. It's about being real and embracing your individuality, okay? And it's the art of recognizing what makes you exceptional, and leveraging those attributes to create a lasting impression. Okay? Just as organizations curate their image to connect with consumers, individuals also develop their personal brand to connect with peers, to connect with mentors, to be ahead on the talent pipeline, um, and to connect with clients the world over. So then, it's really important for us to learn how to build a personal brand. And it's a journey, and it's often characterized by challenges. And when I embarked on the path of developing my personal brand, I realized that it's not a one-size-fits-all. It's a unique experience that demands self-discovery, a lot of self-reflection, and a willingness to learn from every step. And I liked what the father said. He talked about our willingness to learn. Steve Jobs calls it to stay foolish. Just stay foolish because, you know, that Steve Jobs and his language of his seven principles of success, that one has always stayed with me when he says, you know, just be open to take on new and to take on what you didn't know before. So my early years, perhaps my brand was navigated in, an, in a different way from what it then became in the medias and what it is today. Today, I have the benefit of hindsight and I have the benefit of experience. So my personal brand would be navigated perhaps to a lot more advocacy, a lot more calling for a better, a more enabling environment for women's economic empowerment, um, etc. So seasons may dictate the direction and the navigation that you will drive your personal brand. So my journey began with a desire to share my passion for brand building and communication, like I have shared here. Um, when I started as an entrepreneur, I was producing branded merchandise. Prior to that, I was in corporate Kenya for about 12 years, building brands for different corporates regionally you know, growing on somebody's budget, training and learning the craft. And I, I, and you know, I had a successful corporate career. And then, you know, life visited on me and I decided I wanted to move into um, personal private business. And that was merchandising and we, we, we built an, an enterprise of envy in the region. Um, and then, you know, I got navigated into this school by Patricia Murugami. I have never forgiven her for that. And then she ushered me into a class and there was Dr. Mongai saying that if you want to leave, leave now because your life is going to get disrupted. And that's exactly what this school did. Disrupted so that I became a critical thinker much more than before and have built a personal brand around disruptive thinking in many ways than I have time to share. And, 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 and that's, I think, important, especially for, for the kind of world that we are living in. Was it easy? 
Absolutely not. Has it been easy? I'm still learning and I'm still growing and I'm still going back to school. Um, I have faced many moments of self-doubt um, and uns uncertainty. I'm told girl power, there's always something we call imposter syndrome that visits on us. That has been part of the journey of building the personal brand. But the moment of vulnerability has also taught me the importance of self-belief and the power of authenticity. Like be you, and we'll be getting into unpacking that in a little bit. I realized that my journey was unique, and my voice, if raised, had immense value. I've learned that building a personal brand requires regular engagement, sharing insights, engaging in conversations to be set apart as a thought leader. So in essence, the art of building a personal brand is centered around four principles. I want to quickly speak into these because I feel if I don't share this, then really I haven't done justice. The first and non-negotiable four, the first is you just must drive differentiation. You just must find your unique value proposition. That thing that distinguishes you that people will believe you can do it because you've got game to that thing. Just find it in yourself and know that that is it. And that it is delivered differently from the next person, the next person, and the next person. And in his mastery, this God who created us has deposited in each one of us something that is unique to us, that somebody cannot take from you or change for you if, you, if you understand. Why is differentiation important? Because of the distinction that it will leave on your personal brand. It allows for you to be unique in your craft. The second important principle is consistency. You will be different so that you're unique but you will be different consistently. You will be different in January, consistently into February, consistently into March, consistently from 2018 into 2021, into 2025. So far, so good. Why the consistency? Because consistency builds trust. What is the journey of doing business? The journey of doing business is when I am aware who you are, I know you, and I have liked you, and I have trusted you, which is why being consistent in your personal brand becomes non-negotiable. The third is that don't be different and consistent, and nobody knows about it. So you must build awareness of your consistency and your differentiation. Why do you need to build awareness so that you become familiar? People begin to recognize you. I asked here if you knew Beyonce. Have you ever met Beyonce? But when you said Beyonce, I saw some warmth coming out of you. <laughs> How did that happen? because she has made herself familiar. And this is, in today's world, this can be achieved relatively affordably because of the digitization of the way we are consuming media messages. The last one of the four is that you have to sustain investing in an improvement, okay? You, you keep getting into a better version of that differentiated personal brand of yours. Why? Because in reinvesting, then you're building value. Tukosawa, there are men and women out of this alumni community who don't need any collateral as they walk into the bank. Their name is enough. Their word is enough. We're together? There are men and women out of this alumni community. You just need to pick up the phone and say, just just sort it out. Correct? Am I speaking to alumni of Strathmore? Yes. Yeah? Because of the value that has been deposited over time. So differentiation, consistency, awareness, and sustained investment. How do you do this? If 
you study successful personal brands, some of which I have cited, Professor Wangari Madai and others, Barack Obama, Bar Barack Obama, it has taken courage. It takes courage to be a disruptive thinker. It takes courage to decide I will be for this and not for the other thing. It takes courage to sit with yourself and have a conversation to define your personal brand and your personal attributes. It will take commitment. It will take commitment to stick to what it is you are saying your personal brand is going to be about. If it will be in the women's economic empowerment, it will take you sticking so that you know, you're not a brand that is schizophrenic. One day you're this, the next day you're this, the next day you're this. Then we don't see the consistency and, we, and then you lose the trust. It will take capability. And I love that we are alumni here. We can keep coming back to deposit better, to enrich our capability and our proficiency and our skill. Keep getting better at what you do. Since 2003, uh, 2008, when I was here, I have kept going back to school. I have kept going back to school. And in the kind of age we're living, you can do online and you can keep improving your proficiency. How can we do this? The fourth one is character. We have everything that we need from our alumni community to be who we need to be in order to drive transformation. So character, are you the men and women that when you walk into the room, you will command the respect necessary for the decisions to favor the proposition? Are you the kind of men and women who the meeting cannot end before we hear a word from you? Are you the kind of men and women who we need on the team, that the, the commission or the team or the whatever is not complete if we don't have you because your character has spoken? And then the last thing of how do we? It is impossible to light those bulbs in Africa if we do not wear a lens of compassion. It is just the way it is. Africa still needs the delicate handling that only men and women out of this community that is so sensitized to develop a pipeline of African leadership of distinction can, can, can access. So as we think about being courageous to call out what is needing to be called out, we need more voices to say we cannot continue. We want to build engineers that are true and doctors that are not for <laughs> the thing. I'm, I'm being nice, my. <laughs> we need to eat, Eva, so finish. <laughs> Courage, commitment, Cons okay. Courage, commitment. Cap capability, get better, improve your craft, keep getting better, keep getting better, character and compassion. And as I finish, what has worked for me as a personal brand, you know, um, and I'm grateful to God. I have, um, I have um, built it through the thick and thin. I think there is truth in building your faith. Build your faith. Insulate your faith. Stand for what you believe in. Protect it. Know that this is what I believe in and it will be part and parcel of who I am. So build your faith for whatever you call it to be, but build your faith. And the second is sharpen your focus. Keep it visible. It's on your dashboard. It's on your reminders. There will be naysayers. There will be people to challenge. But sharpen your focus. As we seek to build an authentic personal brand, focus is very key. The principle of sharpening your focus imparts a skill of distinguishing intricate information. It, has a, it serves us as a compass, as a blueprint, guiding us 
Every time you take a little stock, you reevaluate, you have your group of um, people you can bounce back and say, remember I said I'm chasing after this personal position and defining myself this way. How do you think I'm doing? That, that you can get better because you've got a blueprint that you don't want to step out of. And then I think the third for me would be invest in your fraternity. Alumni, we can do much better than perhaps we've been doing before. Let's invest in our fraternity. Let's tap into our fraternity. Let's find the gold and the gems and the jewels that exist within this community. But also invest in a fraternity of like-minded men and women who will speak truth to power, who will agree with you, or will remind you of who you need to be based on the blueprint. Invest in your fraternity. You need a support system. I know, Dr. Ogutu, you talked about an ecosystem. What's your personal ecosystem to get you to succeed in your personal brand? So invest in your fraternity because relationships we cultivate are invaluable network for personal branding. Cultivating your network, fostering collaborations, forging partnerships are much like an investment strategy. Remember we said you need to keep reinvesting as part of the four non-negotiable principles. And then the fourth and final one, defend your future. Whatever thing that risks you actualizing your personal brand so that it is driving transformation within your community, within your business, within your corporate organization, flee from it, run away from it, defend it, defend your future. Defend your future by jumping on to the boards that are going to move your community further. Jump onto decision-making think tanks. Jump onto the places where you know you will add value and the transformation agenda can be realized. Whether it's at a county level, whether it's at a local community level, figure out, can I be part of the board of my village high school or whatever? But you know, just defend your future because um, can you imagine if we're futureless? Defend your future. Let's get involved with issues of sustainability and, and build our personal resona out of those opportunities. So I, I challenge um, us today to acknowledge that building a personal brand has really no end. I love the personal brand of the man Christ that was discussed here by the father. Um, and, and what an amazing man. He was absolutely authentic, right? He didn't have any time or bandwidth for the naysayers. He told them that on this day I will be crucified and on the third day I will rise again. It didn't matter you know, how you settled with that kind of information. So this school introduces, this, introduces us to, to that man who really can be an excellent mirror of authentic personal brand building. And even as we do that, let's embrace the challenges, remain authentic, and even when things don't really go as smoothly as they were intended to, let's be quick to remember, and this has been a personal mantra of mine, fall seven times, rise eight. Fall seven times, rise eight. So my commitment to innovate and create opportunities was deeply inspired by the values instilled in me during my time at this great school. And in conclusion, by embracing your authenticity, sharing your insights with the world, you not only create a mark on your industry, but also create transformative opportunities. So fellow alumni, Ladies and gentlemen, let's embrace the challenge to be champions of change in our society and the world. My personal story is that I was never apologetic about being involved in three clear areas. The first 
which has stayed with me more years than perhaps the other two, is women's economic empowerment. I have loved the journey and have challenged status quo and you know by just staying focused the results have come. The second area of interest and I think you inferred in your introduction was serving on the board of Zawadi Africa Education Fund. Loving to mentor youth and growing them irrespective. And the third area is raising awareness and support for children living with disability, having the honor of raising a daughter um, who lives with cerebral palsy, and she's 26 today, and about to become a published author. Hello. Okay. So the values we carry from Strathmore should be guiding principles that can drive us to innovate, to lead, and mentor. Let us embrace our personal brands as, as catalysts to create meaningful impact. I really want to say I am indebted for this opportunity to come and you know just speak very quickly um, um, to to all of you here tonight um, and express gratitude to the Strathmore community for shaping our education and um, value standards. It's my hope that as we gather tonight, we remember our commitment to excellence and service. Those two words again, fulfilling the mission and vision of our really beloved community that is our alma mater. I thank you very much for your kind attention. God bless you, and now let's go build successful personal brands. God bless you.